Well, I mentioned earlier that we are on location this week, coming to you from this year's Triumph of Ag Expo here in Omaha. A bit earlier this week, we are able to catch up with Darren Newsom at the show to discuss the latest when it comes to the grain markets. Here's our conversation from Wednesday afternoon. Well, here at the Triumph of Ag Expo, we are joined now by Darren Newsom. Darren, great to see you. Thanks for making it out here to the show. I appreciate you having me on again, Bryce. Well, first, how are the conversations with producers? How are people feeling as we kind of gear up for the next growing season? You know, I think I think the mood was was good. Um, you know, we we did our we did our meeting there. We did our or we did a podcast, and you know, the, it seems to still be an upbeat, uh, pretty much an upbeat sense here uh, as, as we head into spring. So, you know, that's good to see. There's been a lot of years at the Triumph of Ag that just simply hasn't been the case. But you know, this year I think there's still a great deal of optimism. Yeah. Well, I got a few questions that I want to bring up on today's broadcast, but a few of them have centered around what's happened to the markets this week. So kind of size up your opinion on what we saw Tuesday, saw a bit of a down day, a little mm -hmm. bit of a rebound here on Wednesday. Yeah, the biggest thing that we saw is that we've seen a great deal of uh, me, fund selling uh, to really pummel these markets here through late February. But then once we got, say, early mid-morning of, of March 1 on Wednesday, that those orders were done. They, they'd all been filled. They'd moved out of the market, and so that creates a vacuum. And you know, commercial traders they still need supplies. You know, there's there's still tight supplies of corn, still tight supplies of soybeans. So they step back in. We saw it in the spreads, and sure enough, markets rallied. And in some cases, we saw very sizable rallies. So this could go on for a couple three days. Longer term, we haven't really changed the trend yet. I still see downtrends, basically wherever we go. But short term, daily charts, weekly charts look a little bit uh, more bullish here as we head home uh, midweek. So you're seeing a downward trend. Let's start on corn. Yeah. Where do you see that market going? What are the factors leading it down in your opinion? Yeah, a couple big things. Number one, if we look at the cash market, um, it's been dropping here recently. We've, we've seen some pressure. Uh, we've seen some slightly weaker basis. We've seen futures markets going lower. So the net result is cash markets going lower. Demand is slowing down. We, we still have plenty of cattle on feet. But as we moved through February, it just seemed like there was fewer than there was at the beginning of the month. And then we've got ethanol demand hasn't kicked into its seasonal highs yet. And exports just can't get rolling. At some point they might, they just haven't yet. So you've got all three legs of demand weighing on the corn market and that's pulling down the cash. On the new crop, uh, December got very interesting early in midweek because the key was 561 three quarter. If it broke that and then hit 560, that really needed to hold. If it didn't, then all of a sudden the doors opened up to 540 and 545. So we saw it midweek, we saw it get down to something like 544, something like that, 544, 545, and it stopped, excuse me, 565, and it stopped. And then it started to rally again. So for now, it's held those lows. We'll see if it can continue through the spring. How about for soybean? You're also seeing a downward uh, pressure there? I am still seeing a downward, uh, I'm still seeing a downtrend in soybeans as well. Uh, this is partly seasonal because this is the time of year when uh, Brazilian soybeans start to displace uh, U.S. beans in the global supply and demand picture. And we have seen uh, shipments picking up out of Brazil. And I think really our, our eyes kind of opened up a little bit with the latest weekly export inspections number. It was down 56% from the previous weeks. And again, it is the time of year, but that's still a, a sharp drop. And we need to continue to see shipments. We still need to see export business. I know we've got crush, we've got crush going on here in the United States, but we really need to keep our exports together as long as we can. The rain continuing to fall in Brazil as long as it can so we can move as many of these beans as we have. Darren, you mentioned the the exports and the infrastructure down in South America. China has actually invested quite a bit to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, they're able to get exports out of uh, South America to China. One of the questions a producer asked you had a chance to hear uh, some of your thoughts was about the U.S. and Chinese relationship. Seeing some tension be built there long term, what are your thoughts on that? How bad could that relationship get? Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to get any worse than it was between 2017 and 2020. And China doesn't want to buy from the United States. In, you know, at that point in the year, the U.S. became a secondary supplier uh, of soybeans to China. But when there's weather problems, in the last couple of years we've seen weather problems in Brazil, and they were, they were really counting on, Brazil was really, excuse me, China was really counting on a record crop in Brazil. But it just keeps raining, so they have to keep buying from the United States. They have to keep shipping from the United States. So as long as the rains continue to slow harvest, as long as it makes it more difficult for those beans to get to port, begrudgingly, China's going to have to pull some soybeans from the U.S. Their people can't go hungry. The chickens need, you know, the chickens that they're going to turn into food have to have soybeans, have to have soybean meal. 
All right, let's wrap up here with some uh, some rapid fire questions on old crop and we'll get the new crop. Your thoughts on old crop? Should we be moving more at this point? I wouldn't move it right now, but basis is still strong. If I want to do anything, I'd probably lock in basis, both corn and soybeans. And then let's see if we can't get the May, July contracts to rally a little bit. You know, move back out of this hole that they fell into uh, during February. And I think that'll give us a better overall price. On the new crop side of things? Be very cautious, more so on corn than soybeans because everything is set up for some fear to be taken out of the corn market. Uh, you know, the, over the last six months, we saw corn, these corn buy acres away from November soybeans. Uh, we've seen weather patterns seemingly change. So while, you know, we need to see if that these corn contract can hold 560, uh, and if it does, fine. If it doesn't, it probably falls to 540. I don't want to sell anything right now, but if it does start to move below 560, I probably want to get something on the books, maybe just using some options uh, or making some sales down there and then do some options at a later point. All right, Darren's final word of the week. What would you like to leave us with? Final word of the week, fundamentals have not changed, at least not right now. As we sit here today in early March, fundamentals are still long-term bullish corn, soybeans, not necessarily wheat, but corn and soybeans. That hasn't changed. It could change. It could change as we move deeper into 23, but that's still the underlying theme is that fundamentally both markets are still bullish.